Hello again. In this video, we're going to do one problem on conduction heat transfer. Now, in this case, we have a heat generation inside one of the walls. And uh, this problem is uh, based on SI unit. So uh, let's go through this and solve it together. A planar wall is composed of two materials. Wall one has a uniform heat generation of 1.5 times 10 to the power of six watt per meter cube. So look at the unit that's a volumetric heat generation rate and a thermal conductivity of 60 watt per meter Kelvin. Second wall has no heat generation and thermal resistance is given to be 150 watt per meter Kelvin. The inner surface of the wall one is well insulated so adiabatic or insulated boundary condition, while the outer surface of wall two is exposed to 30 degrees C fluid, which in the picture you can see the heat transfer coefficient given to be 1200 watt per meter square Kelvin as well. Now the question is the temperature of the wall surface exposed to the fluid is most nearly A, B, C different values for the temperature. So to solve this, <clears throat> um, of course, we know that when this side is well insulated, that means that's adiabatic and we do not have heat loss or gain from this side. So heat flux through this wall is zero at x equal to zero at this location because it's insulated. So all the heat generated in wall one, so in wall one, we have volumetric heat generation, which we show it with Q dot, uh, which is given to be 1.5 times to power of six. All heat in a 1D problem must go to the floor. So as it shows the heat flow direction is from wall one to the floor. Well, we're going to use the Newton's law of cooling that is equal to, so heat flux, uh, which is nothing but heat rate divided by area. Heat flux is equal to H, heat transfer coefficient times delta T. In this case, we know the T infinity of the flow is 30 degrees C. And we are looking for the temperature, the temperature of the wall surface exposed to the floor. So let's call this T2. So T2 minus T infinity, that's the Newton's law of cooling. Uh, I already know, let's, let's say what we know, what we don't know. I already know the heat transfer coefficient I'm looking for T2. I know the T infinity, which is 30 degrees C. Uh, so my missing information in this right-hand side is T2. That's what I'm looking for here. So this is T2. Now, I also need to know the heat flux going through wall two to the fluid. How I can find the heat flux? So for heat flux, we need another equation. So this is kind of given as well. How? Because we know that uh, in wall one, you have a heat generation and the only way heat can leave that wall one is going through the right-hand side to the floor because left-hand side is insulated and it's a 1D problem. So if this is my X direction, let's say, you do not consider heat a movement through y or z direction. So, so my q double prime is nothing but volumetric heat transfer times, uh, let's call this thickness L. In this case, going to be 1.5 times 10 to the power of six. Let's write down the unit so we can cancel out and make sure everything is Perfect, so Q dot times 
L is 40 millimeter. By the way, we have to make sure we put it in a meter, right? So 40 millimeter, you have to divide it by 1000 to have it in meter, right? Because there are 1000 millimeter in one meter. But the total unit be meter. So in this case, uh, my heat flux would be um, H T2 minus T infinity. Quickly, I have T infinity. I'm looking for T2. I have H and now also. I have Q double prime as well, if you calculate this. So let's isolate T2. I'm looking for temperature of the wall two that is exposed with the fluid. Um, by reordering this equation on top, uh, T2 is nothing but T infinity or air temperature plus Q dot L divided by H. If I use this equation, really my equation, if, if we know the Q double uh, prime, um, another way you can say T infinity plus, instead of Q dot L, you can call it Q double prime and divided by heat transfer coefficient, right? Make sense? So T2 is equal to Q double prime divided by H and plus T infinity. And we have everything to do this. What is T infinity? T infinity is given to be 30 degrees C plus volumetric heat generation, 1.5 times 10 to power of six watt per meter cubed times L is nothing but 40 times divided by 1000 or 0 0.04 meter divided by H, heat transfer coefficient given to be 1200, 1200 watt per meter square Kelvin. And if you do this calculation, you get T2 at 80 degrees C. And so that's your answer. You can always quickly double check your units if you have enough time and make you want to double check everything is fine. Let's look at this case. For example, the unit of this term should be same as this term, which is same as the left-hand side term should be degree C. Let's see, are we getting degree C or not? Watt and watt cancel out each other. Meter and meter cubed makes it meter square, which you can cancel it out with this. And really at the end you have, the, uh, you have Kelvin, which goes all the way on top. And since watt per meter square Kelvin is the same as watt per meter square C, our unit is exactly correct. Because here with degree C and degree K, when we talk about differences by increase in temperature, either in degree C or K, they're the same. So uh, you can exactly write this at watt per meter square C and you can verify your work. Also, uh, you can do also here uh, quickly going back to Q double prime when we talked about volumetric heat transfer generation is nothing but water area, uh, so watt per volume. And uh, you divide and multiply by a length. So meter makes this meter cube, which is consistent with uh, your Newton's law of cooling right hand side. You should have them a watt per meter area. So temperature found to be 80 degrees C, temperature over T2, 
Yeah, you can see that answer C is the correct answer for this problem. So again, Newton's law of cooling and knowing the fact that insulated wall means that you do not have heat loss or heat gain through that wall. So all the heat should go to the fluid is letting you to know the amount of heat. And then of course you can use the Newton's heat law of cooling to find the missing temperature information.